weekend in college football, a loaded card, breakdowns, and locks. Download, subscribe to that. When we come back, more picks. The Wizard of Odds, Kenny White, going to join me to break down the Red River Showdown. We all know Tom Herman's ATS record. Very good when he's an underdog. Will that trend continue or you know, lay the points at the Cotton Bowl? Boy, oh boy, this is one of the more enticing college football cards that we've had this season. A lot of ranked matchups, a lot of rivalry matchups, including the Red River Showdown. We talk about USC and Notre Dame. And then how big is Florida and LSU going to be with CFP implications in that one? So a lot to break down here and digest. And who better to bring along here than the Wizard of Odds, Kenny White? The SEC on CBS is where we'll start, Kenny. Bama laying the 17 at Kyle Field at Texas A&M. Except when you look at the spread, you actually have a stronger play on the total. I do, Tommy. You know, 17 points, it's a lot of points. SEC competition, these teams know each other so well. But 61, oh my goodness, these teams starting to know each other a little bit better every game. And really, the A&M offense has not really projected well against solid defenses. And they're up against one of the best in Alabama. So far, they scored 10 points against Clemson and 20 against Auburn. I see the Aggies scoring more than 20 in this football game. So if they got 20 and Alabama scored 37, we're still only at 57 points. I'm just not sure where all these points are going to come from with A&M's offense struggling. And their defense is outstanding. Jim Official will be ready for for, uh, for the Crimson Tide. He knows that they're trying to go over top of the passing game. He's going to try to probably play a bend but don't break defense and skip it up between the 20s. All right, so that's your look at uh, Bama and Texas A&M. Moving on to another SEC showdown is Florida at LSU. This is a primetime game. This is going to be in Baton Rouge. So you've got the Tigers laying nearly two touchdowns. But once again, you really like the total. Yeah, I do. I do like this total. I like it under as well. And a lot of it has to do with defense, defense, defense. Uh, Florida showed it last week what they did to Auburn. And LSU's defense has just been outstanding from the start of the season until now. Uh, both teams, both teams will try to establish the running game. Their quarterbacks have been very, very good. Kyle Trask has been a great addition now to the Florida Gators. But again, they want to run the football. They want to control the clock. And LSU's the same way. Ed Ogeron is a defensive guy. His defense has been outstanding so far this year. He got two top 10 defenses, 56 and a half points. Another game that this game is such a meaningful game in the standings, the championship, the SEC, that they start to get a little bit more conservative. So 56 and a half, again, I just don't see where all these points are coming from. All right, and we saw Florida, of course, go under with Auburn, and then with LSU, they took on Mountain West, Utah State. So, again, now we're back in conference play with these two matchups. You do like the under as well. Moving on to another rivalry game, we got the Red River Showdown between OU and Texas, this one out of the Cotton Bowl. What's the play here, Wizard? You know, it's, it, the, the numbers are pretty tough, but the trends, if you just look at the trends, play the trends in this game and hope they continue. Tom Herman as an underdog of seven or more points. Now, he's been an underdog of one and one and a half and two. It's really don't show me a whole lot of being an underdog, but when you're an underdog of a touchdown or more, Tom Herman is 9-1 and one ATS. He's won six of those straight up. In those 10 games, seven of them have gone under. Both Lincoln Riley and Tom Herman are in their third year, but this will be the fourth time that they've played. Oklahoma's won two of the three. Texas has covered two of the three, and two of the three have gone under the total. Longhorns do have the revenge from losing last year's Big 12 championship game. So I say it's correlated. Take the Texas Longhorns plus the 11, under 75 and a half. All right, so you are backing Tom Herman again, taking the points at 11 and the under at 75 and a half. And as you mentioned, you know, Oklahoma, four straight Big 12 championships. But in terms of the rivalry game during the regular season, Texas has certainly been there. Moving on to the Big 10 now, we got Penn State on the road, laying three at Iowa. We saw the Hawkeyes get into that slugfest with Michigan. So when you look at this one, you got a, a lean, a like, a love here. Yeah, I, I like the game. I like Iowa plus the points at home. This is such a tough place to play. Kinnick Stadium, very well coached with Kurt Ferentz. Penn State kind of has some uh, – their stats are a little bit miscued. They're skewed because of the teams they played and the games they've run points up in. You know, they, they, they showed who they were, I thought, against Pittsburgh. 
Uh, that was a battle right down to the end. Uh, maybe they weren't up as 100% for Pittsburgh as they should have. But, again, going on the road now, we'll see what John Glifford's made of. This is a really good Iowa defense. Saw them last week just shut down Michigan's offense, which is good, not great. But still, I was very impressed with the Hawkeyes' defense. At home getting points. Yeah, give me this Hawkeye team. I think they can hang right with Penn State in this football game. Going to be another low-scoring battle. And we saw Penn State not cover against Pitt. I think the number was 17 then. They were playing Purdue. So, again, perhaps uh, overvalued and laying the three at Iowa. One more game, Kenny. We got USC and Notre Dame. You got the Fighting Irish 10.5 or 11. When you look at this game, what are you thinking? Yeah, it's all about all about coaching for me here. USC Clay Helton has really struggled, uh, especially on the road. Three and nine his last 12 away. And then you're looking – Notre Dame, that outstanding at home. Brian Kelly, 10 and 5 ATS. I think this is a coaching mismatch. USC's talent is right there on the same level with Notre Dame. However, Notre Dame has a slight advantage on defense. They're very experienced. Nine of the 11 starters are juniors or seniors. They've stepped up in every game this year. And then Ian Book. Now, obviously, they've got one quarterback. USC's trying to figure out who their quarterback is. And when you have two quarterbacks, you really don't have a quarterback. And I don't think they do because both quarterbacks are right now, I think, below average quarterback, slow as anything. So Notre Dame, I think, wins this one. Their home field advantage comes through. I'll take the Irish minus the points.